Thank you. Hello morning, and welcome Hello, to please. the Reds Report, Barnsley FC's longest running podcast and That's still it. very proud and honoured to be part of the TalkSport fans <laughs> network. Um, as you can tell, his contract negotiations in Barcelona um, came to a halt. And seeing as he was a free agent, uh, we, we, we had a word with that uh, director of media and he signed up for another season. Back Me. from the land of Sangria, and less wages. <laughs> Roja, and on paying peanuts, um, Ian is back. Ian, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, Barca couldn't... Uh, Juan Laporte said to me, we're building this new stadium, you know, I can't stretch to a lifetime supply of Rioja, so take it or leave it. So I've come back. <laughs> and I suppose when you drink it by the pint like you do, it, it becomes a dear do, doesn't it? You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think um, I'll be money's worth. Yeah. And <laughs> showing off his Inter Miami shirt. Inter Miami shirt. Ladies and boys. gentlemen, live <laughs> from his bedroom, it's Steve. Steve, how are we doing? Should have put yes, me right on. Keep your moves. I know, I'll have to get the get terminus. Get them, get them measured. Other bra, other menders are uh, are available. <laughs> um, boys, last week, well, one of you were in uh, were in Barcelona. We we, uh, we had Phil Phil Hall on the show where we were talking about Stephen Ishway. We were talking about Manchester United in the cup. Um, the question was asked: Do you think that maybe that's on the mind? And um, we're here now a week later. Conceded ten goals, scored none. Uh, it's been a good week, Steve. <laughs> it's been shite, hasn't it? Let's be honest. Um, too many players didn't turn up at Stevenage and a mixture of uh, poor tactics and players not playing to the full potential at United as well, I think. Let's, two bad let's, look, games. At, let's look at Stevenage first. Line-up. Uh, Slovenian goal, back four of the Juvigne, Pines, Robertson, Earl, Craig sitting in front of that back four and then Cotter, Phillips, Connell, and Keller Dunn and Sam Cosgrove up front. Um, <clears throat> three goals, um, Ian, is, is, is bad enough. Stephen, it's one to side that was firing on all cylinders. I mean, we've got better sides to come in the next couple of weeks. What went wrong? Uh, <laughs> well, I think Clark summed it up afterwards when he said... <laughs> They've been spending all week on the training ground defending balls into the box because they knew exactly what were coming from Stevenage. So that worked well, didn't it? Because I think all the goals came from balls into the box, free headers. They were a shambles. You could argue as soon as Pines has gone out of that side, the second half at Stevenage, and then obviously didn't play at United, the back three has gone to, gone to pieces. Um, so I just think, like Steve said, uh, none of them played to the full potential. I've got, uh, we'll probably touch on it in a bit anyway with the United game, but I've got concerns over Roberts. Um, and I don't think he's, I don't think he's really found his best, either A, formation or his best defence, whether we go to a four or with that three, because as soon as Pines goes out, um, Earl, Roberts, too slow. They've got a, they've got a, um, an error in them, but yeah, they just, just collectively, there were poor goals to concede. You knew what you were getting at Stevenage. You knew exactly what were coming, and they trained for it all week and still didn't defend those crosses, did they? It is. It, 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 it's right, isn't it, Steve? When you when you look at the defence, so Earl, yeah, Mark Roberts. He's got he's got a beautiful long throw, but I think he saw against United. You know. He, he, Aerial wise, I don't always worry about him that much, but I think at his feet and coming at him, you worry. Pines, I know he's a bit of a cold figure, and obviously he went off injured because he got an elbow, so the um concussion protocol was, was put in place. I just think sometimes with Pines, I, I just worry about him, his capacity to hold on to a ball or play a pass out. It seems very much like hoof it out. And De Juvigne, I, I really wanted him to. to to be better than last season and to learn from the other two. But actually, and I might be wrong, I feel that the Juvigne, whilst he's not an outstanding player, is probably the most regular performer. Would that, would that be fair to say? I think it is fair to say. I think uh, the Juvigne is his best defender we've got. Uh, ball at his feet. You know, he, he, he can read game quite well. I was surprised Roberts against Man United, um, and I know what Ian's saying, were particularly poor. 
it looked three yards, three yard too slow. Um, positioning at times was shocking. Um, Pine, yeah, yeah, Pine's a cult figure. Um, but there's, there's a definitely a rick in him. And there's times that he just, to be honest, he doesn't look like a footballer. He's swinging his legs and, and arms about. But when you let players like Shepard and Lapata go out on loan, then it's it's looking like we could be getting caught out. I mean, for me, Earl Earl's Earl's a good player. Ball at his feet, he pushes forward. Um, I still think he's struggling <clears> at that left back position. I don't rate O'Keefe. I don't care what anybody says. Don't rate him at all. We brought Gent in. I know he's a young lad, and I know Clark said that he needs to he needs to improve. Well, the only way he's going to improve is getting game time. We've said that before. Um, and for me, he'd, he'd get in, in in that side above O'Keefe every day at week. You've got Loftus. Uh, you know, if, why not try him at left? But like Ian said as well, why don't we go back to a back four and see how that works? I'm not saying Earl's got the pace to be pushing up on that left-hand side, but he can surely defend better than uh, better than anybody else. I think Clark needs to uh, needs to be asking himself quite a few uh, quite a few s- strong questions uh, before Burton on Saturday. I just just sorry, just on that, Steve. I think I think you're spot on with Lapata and Shepherd. I don't think Lapata's well. I reckon have done anything wrong to deserve to go out on loan, but um, we. We haven't got a defender who can bring the ball out of defence. Kitchen could do it a little bit. Um, so they get caught, and Roberts has done it, and uh, Earl a few times. They give the ball away. They, they're not like doing a 60-yard pass. They're doing like a short pass. And it's been, it, it's happened in a, several games where it's been intercepted, and suddenly the opposition are like three-on-three three with us or two-on-two. Two. Well, that happened, that happened at United, didn't it? Earl yeah, came out, well, last that's ball. Not- but yeah. O'Keefe, O'Keefe had gone past him. O'Keefe yeah. were halfway up bleeding field. Yeah. And then you wonder then why their player's strolling through, makes his send a cup of tea before he sorts it in back at net. Yeah. It's, no, it's I poor, agree poor on decision what. making. Yeah. And I just think, you know, it's easy to criticise in the United game, but I'm, we, I saw it against Mansfield. I've seen it in a number of games where yeah. Roberts is, is guilty of that. And we, we maybe should play a little bit horses for courses and, I'm not saying we always try and play it out the back, but we have got players who can play it out the back. You know, the more um, traditional big lads at the back, and that haven't we haven't got much pace in defence either. So when when teams run at us, we haven't got the pace like we had. Kitchen was was really quick, or um, you know, you could look at um, a number of players that that they're, they're a bit lethargic because well, I'll say Roberts and Earl are 30, 30 plus. So it isn't. I think, like I said, front and midfield, we probably can just tweak, and we're not so bad. But he, he has got to look at that defence and work out: is it a back three? Is it a back four? And who's the best personnel? My issue always is that, for me, Pines and Roberts, because because the big lads, it don't matter one's thirty odd and Pines is I don't know mid twenties or whatever, they're just too similar. And if in that central part you haven't got any pace, it. it I don't know. I, I, I look at Lopata and I don't know how he's doing up in Scotland. I hope he's doing well for him. I don't understand why he's not playing, even if it's for competition of places, like even yeah. if it's to push the other ones. Now, Pines obviously was out with, with concussion. Mark Roberts, and, and listen, he's I, I love Mark Roberts at the club. I, I never thought oh, he would be, because uh, he started every single game, I believe. So, you know, again, I know the professional sports people, but I, I just that first goal against United summed it up a bit because it's a bit like it was a bit like schoolboy football, wasn't it? He literally just stood and anyone passed him, wrong footed. Um, and whilst maybe at United, which we'll go on about, you could say, but yeah, but look at the opposition, you can't defend that against Stevenage. You, 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 there's no way anybody can defend, but ah, uh, we've tried this. And so you, you can look at the defense, we can, we can look at the fact that we didn't score goals, but like the front line. Kayla Dunn has an eye for goal. Connell, maybe not regularly, but, you know, Phillips is Phillips. Cotter has been known to come forward and Cosgrove was up front. But none of them really did anything meaningful, I'm, I'm right in saying. I know Barry Cotter and everybody's talking about Barry Cotter and, and he has, he, he seemed to have improved all last season. 
But there needs to be an end product. It's great if you go past two on the wing and you put a ball in, but if it's too high for Cosgrove, too wide, or it gets intercepted, I just felt that all around, it, we were just way below. And that made me wonder, is that United on the mind? Do they want to like, oh, I don't want to, you know what I mean? Because it's an opportunity missed, isn't it? Was there an outstanding player against Steve Nitsch? Does, does any, can anybody get away with not being criticised for that performance? I'll go with you first, Ian. Um, probably not, no. I think... Matty, Matty Craig, was the, he was sort of like just, you know... Yeah, I don't think anybody, anybody particularly had a, had, a, had a, what, an 8 out of 10, would you say? Um, so, yeah, it was right through the team, and like you say, just mentally, the... the the, you can talk all week about, oh, we're not going to get distracted by the United game, but it clearly, it must have had an impact because it wasn't one or two where the poor game was it. They collectively didn't defend correctly. They didn't didn't offer much in that second half. So collectively it went right through the team. and, and um, Player, Players yeah. went missing. Players went yeah. missing against Stevenage. And I know, yeah, again, you'll get shot down in flames. We were Phillips against Stevenage, supposedly our best player. You know, Sky do a 10-minute build-up at the beginning at United match saying what a fantastic player he is. Never showed it. Never well, showed it in either game. Cotter were probably better than most. The only player that came out of Stevenage with any sort of credit was Jalo when he came on because he at least he attacked and he tried to create something. But again, in 15, 20 minutes, whatever it were that he were on, what can you do when you're not getting any service? He was having to make everything himself. But well, yet again, I mean, how many times do we say that about our midfield? It looks fantastic on paper, but we're not creating. No. And just on that subject, I mean, the, I wasn't the only one thinking. I heard people around me at the United game saying exactly the same. And they say, Phillips, where was he? You know, he has a couple of good games and he lives off it for the next couple of months. Michael Duff called him out on it and said he needs to be more consistent. Daryl Clark's called him out already this season and says he needs to be a 90-minute player and, he, and not slowing down in the last 15, 20 minutes. Um, he he uh, goes missing. And for me, I would, and I, we're probably jumping ahead here, but I, I honestly, I think people need to be dropped after these last two games. And I would drop Phillips and I would play Keeler Dunn in his position. And the two, I thought Humphreys did enough on, on Tuesday night to justify a start. With Cosgrove up top, um, at Keeler done behind him and drop Phillips. I think some of them need dropping after what's just happened. Before we go to the United game, then let's talk about the gaffer. I sent you a quote yesterday that I saw on Facebook, and it's not always, you know, when you see a face, it must be true. But I, I did, there was something in it when somebody said, uh, you know, we'd lost. Listen, I'm not going to judge anybody besides the players um, for this loss against Man United. You know, we could have done better, I think, is the overall consensus. I, I don't think you can judge like people did the board and the owners and everything else. But somebody put, I wish Clark was more duff and less flicker. Because he talks a good game, doesn't he? But actually, you know, there, there has to be, there's, there has to be a consequence of a poor performance. And it don't matter if you play Manchester United or Macclesfield. A poor performance should have some sort of consequence. Um, are we laying any blame tactically then for some of the players that did perform at Stevenage? Uh, do we lay some with the gaffer with Clark to say, well, why, why didn't they start? I know in defence, obviously because of the Pines injury, he was probably a little bit so the Javigne, Robertson and Earl started with Cotter on one side and O'Keefe on the other. But should we lay some blame, Steve, at, at the feet of the gaffer? Yeah, of course we should. Um, Stephen H. Wise, there were a couple of perhaps tactical changes he could have made. There's a couple of tactical changes he made that just didn't work out substitution wise. Manchester United, I think a lot of the problems we caused ourselves and was caused by the setup and the tactics that he played. What he should have done against United for me were 5 4 1 and just let them attack. But we didn't. We tried to play open football. We didn't close them down. The space we gave some of them players was ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous. And they got they, they could they were stro that Ugart that Ugart, he looks a really cl cracking player. But they're stroking ball around, and the you know they're making us look like school kids. 
all chasing ball and then all run to one side, then all run to the other side and, and they're just knocking ball about. That is down to tactics and whatever they've trained for never worked at all because they gave them far, far, far too much respect. Did we get any yellow cards on uh, Tuesday night? Yeah, yeah we, we got. Um, Humphrey's got one for diving. Oh, oh, yeah. O'Keefe got, got one. Yeah, oh, for that. For okay, got one for the they, they should have had several. For, yeah, for, for mouthing. Me. Yeah. Did for we get me. any oh, yellow yeah. cards for a nasty challenge or somebody putting the foot in or somebody trying to kick Rashford up in air? No. No. But we didn't. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. We didn't show the nasty side of what we should have been doing. These are premiership players on two, three hundred thousand pounds a week. Give them a little clout, let them know you're there. But we didn't because we couldn't get close enough to them. No. That is down at manager. Let's let's look at the teams. Let's look at the teams. So Slovenian in goal, this is for United. Uh there's Rinier, Marks, <clears throat> sorry, uh Mark Roberts, Earl, Corey O'Keefe, Barry Cotter, midfield, Phillips, Connell, Jurgenathan, up front, Watters and Jallo. They faced a United side with Bayern Deer in goal, Dalot, Maguire, Evans and Collier, the back. Sitting in front of those, Casemiro and Ugarte. And in front of those, Anthony, Christian Eriksen, Alexander Ganaccio and Marcus Rashford. I mean, by all standards, maybe Collier excluded. He's a brilliant youngster that's coming through, but maybe not, you know, as a regular. And the goalie, of course. That's a team full of internationals or ex-internationals. I and I, I listen. I, I am not the head coach. I, I looked at that team, and then I looked at Jallo and Jurgen Nathan's uh, inclusion, and and part of my brain says these are youngsters that have got no fear. They will go at them. They, you know what I mean. On the other side, I think shouldn't you put your best team out? Because he already talked about making changes because we got Burton away. But shouldn't the occasion of the cup match, never mind who you play. Shouldn't we just play our strongest team and 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 try and make a game of it? If we'd have lost two, three, nil, it wouldn't have been better. I just think we've been better seven nil because once the first goal went in, it just everything went to pot. So what was that, Ian? Is it is it was that the best eleven to start? Do you think? Because it could well be. I mean, we all have different opinions. I just thought I get Cosgrove is a target man. But Cosgrove would have maybe made Maguire's evening a little bit more difficult than what Jallo made it. I think um, he, Clark come out didn't he, and said that they wanted to they wanted to press and they wanted to um, have a goal where where they could. And I think that was dangerous to go toe to toe. I think Steve's right. I would have played it tight for the first 20, 25 minutes. You've got Anthony there who's got no confidence. You've got Rashford. I don't get me wrong, but um, Ten Hag played a really strong team. About 5 nearly brought £200 million pounds worth of talent on the on, onto the pitch in Fernandez and Xerxes and Delay and Ahmad. So, you know, he went proper strong. It wasn't like Fergie days of playing the kids. So, but I just I just feel that we should have gone, like you say, 5-4-1. We should have frustrated Anthony and Rashford a lot on confidence. And what you needed to do was keep them quiet. As soon as that first goal went in, the confidence just flowed and the nervousness left United and they were, it was like a training exercise. I'd have stuck Conor Hurrahane in. I'd, I think it was crying out for a bit of experience. He's, he's played in Premier League. Um, I thought Connell tried, but he was overrun because Phillips didn't help him out. Um, I thought Humphreys and Cosgrove, as much as we didn't really hurt, I don't think we really had a shot, they offered more in that second half than Jallo and Waters did. Uh, and I'd see why he played sort of Marsh and Yang and Nathan because he's played them in the earlier rounds and, and what have you. But I, I thought he could have just brought them on for 20 minutes at the end when, you know, I would have gone stronger and I would have put a bit of experience in there and big men up top. And like Steve said, get into them a bit, ruffle the feathers, get them nervous. The longer it stays nil-nil, you can grow into the game then, can't you, and try and take your chances. But when you're 3-0 down at half time or 2-0 down after whatever, game's gone. So... I don't want to be too critical of Clark because it's early days and I do like him. Uh, but you asked the question uh, and we're looking at Clark there. And I think that could have been, I would have stuck Hurrahane in and I would have put two bigger, the Cosgrove and Humphreys in and I would have solidified it and played it tighter and not given him the time and space. We just, uh, once that first went in, that were it. They had all the time in the world. 
Um, you talked about Horahan there. Uh, Dean Whitehead has left the club. He joined in July. He's going to join Stoke. And in the press conference today, um, Clark said that those coaching duties will be taken over by Conor Horahan. Well, I always thought that Horahan was a coach anyway because he's not been playing much. But um, he's going to get increased coaching responsibilities. He says he thrives on it and, and, and he does um, he does really well. Um, it, it leaves you with a bit... If you were the head coach, let's put it this way, would it give you a bit of a headache? You've got Burton up next. Um, it's an away match. Um, credit, by the way, including Ian, to those, was it six and a half thousand that outsang, you know, Old Trafford from minute one to minute 93 or whatever it was. Um, I think thingy, uh, Liam Wapshell put it best in the Yorkshire Post when he did the player scores, lots of falls. I think the highest scoring player from Tuesday was the Juvigne. He's still learning, but he gave him, I think, a six, because at least. Um, and he said, but it, it was it was a supporters night. They they enjoyed the occasion d- despite what what they were served, and uh, they got a solid ten for for backing the team, which, which is nice to see. How ruthless would you be when you look at some of the individuals, you look at some of the performances, the fact that we've conceded ten goals, and I know they were internationals and it was Manchester United, but we have still conceded ten goals. Where would changes realistically, or could changes realistically be made? If you were the head coach, so if we take Ian as Horahan and Steve as Clark, you're you're in the uh, you're in the, the gaffer's room and you're deciding on the lineup for Burton away on Saturday. What what is what is your motivation to make changes? Who's 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 missing out? And are they going on the bench or are you leaving them out? Are you bringing any youngsters in? So over to you. Over to you, gaffer. <laughs> wow, wow, what a lead up that is. <laughs> yeah, of course there's changes. Um my good friend Michael, who I mentioned last week, who I work with, yeah, again keeps me appraised of what's said on uh, uh the sewerage pit that is BBS and the obvious <laughs> keyboard warriors and idiots that come out with some stupid, stupid comments about getting rid of these players and they're not good enough and blah blah blah. Obviously these people are just crawling to a corner. I really do. It makes for toxic reading, not just for fans, but for players as well. Hopefully players don't take any notice whatsoever because they obviously don't know what they're talking about. Um, Slanin is obviously stopping in goal. He's a young lad. He's got a mistake in him. We know that. Um, But let's be reasonable now. We're playing Burton. Good side, but we're back in first division now. We're not playing a premiership side. So for me, Slanin is staying in goal. He's got no backup from Killip. Don't rate him. Sorry, but just don't. Smith, yeah, maybe. Maybe he might get a run out at some point. But I don't think Slanina's made enough errors to warrant dropping. Defensive-wise, first one on team sheet for me is Barry Cotter. Because at least he's looking, even at Stevenage and, and Manu, uh, he were trying to a certain extent. Um, I don't know. Are we playing four at back? Are we playing five at back? I'd, uh, I'd switch it. I'd go f- try four. Yeah. So, for me, it'd be De Givney. Um, If he's not playing Gent, Earl will be left back. And yeah. then it'll be De Givney. And he's, Yeah, I don't think Pines is going to be fit, is he, for this? Pines is still out with that protocol yeah. thing, isn't he? He can't come back. Yeah. So, I guess you're looking back either at, either at Rob, Rob, uh, Roberts or McCarthy, because McCarthy came on. For the last X whatever minutes, I'd give Roberts one more throw. But yeah. like you, like Ian says, um, at the minute he's looking far too slow, and he's for an experienced defender, he's not reading game at all, and he's getting he's getting made to look a bit of a fool at times. Isn't that the key though? If you're a good defender, you don't always have to be fast if you can read it. And you know, yeah, but you've mean? got to read it. If you if you're not reading game either, you yeah. you know you're knackered, aren't you? And he proved yeah. that with two or three at goals on Tuesday night. Um, midfield, Connell stays. Yeah. Um, he's Matty always Craig. fairly consistent. For me, Matty Craig should have started at Manu yeah. to break up play. Um, how many is that we up to? Uh, so got, yeah, you know, so we need another five, two. Seven. Yeah, so Keeler Dunn, you said, 
which is fair enough. I think he should come in for Phillips. Yes, I do think Phillips should be Jot. I ain't got a vendetta against him. I thought he played well first few games, but he's gone back to his normal. I can't be arsed. I'm disappearing. Uh, so he deserves to be dropped. Um I don't know whether I'd play Cosgrove up front. I'd like to say say I'd give Humphreys a, a bit of a go. Because yeah. he's a big lad and he looks to have a bit more pace than Cosgrove yeah, got, does. To, to be fair to Humphreys, I thought the other day, he got the ball down and turned and ran at United's defence. Yeah. And he won a couple and of free kicks. He, I would stick with Watters. Yeah, yeah. I'd, stick with, I'd stick with Watters up there. Because, yeah, so, all right, he started with Jallo and people said, so, oh, bloody rubbish, oh, get rid. But again... Look at the service he was getting. He wasn't getting any getting at all. No. So, no. is that it? Is that near enough? Can't be far off there. Mm -hmm. What else we got? Oh, another midfielder, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't probably. Play. Go on. I wouldn't do Russell because that's three defensive no. midfielders. No, go on. It? Keep going. Keep going. Go on. He's not going to play Hurricane. Benson. Yeah. Give him I a go. Benson would have a bit of a Lovely. start. We've got beautiful air, L'Oreal air. That is like that one, isn't it? There. Oh, I nearly broke my neck then. Is it like um, a young Ginola? Is it? A... Yeah, a long, a young David Ginola. Beautiful. But yeah, why yeah, not? We're we're it up. Bit... We've already said, haven't we? We need to freshen it up. It needs people getting dropped. So why well, not give Benson uh, 60 and, minutes? And, and not because you said it earlier, this is League One. We're playing Burton. They've not won yet. They've drawn four. And they've lost one, but they've not won yet. And a team that is scraping points because they're drawing, to me, you need you need to get at them. Because if you make the same mistake against Stevenage and you let them have the ball, the, I know you can't press at Old Trafford. I get it. Get it completely. But Burton... It, it, it's a bit of it's always been a bit of a tricky fixture for us, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I look back to last season and, and I know it was later on in the season, and but we were losing one nil, and that's when the fans turned on Collins and started having a go at him. And I know we turned it around and won three one, but it's it's not an easy place to go. Like you say, the wingless, they're down near the bottom, but then it's just one of them fixtures, isn't it? They, it's hard work winning at. So like Clark said, he's expecting a reaction. Well, it's not an easy one to go into to, to get three points. And, and so? I, I expected a bit of a reaction from Stevenage. I never thought we would win Man United, but I thought we'd be a better advert for the team we had and what we saw. And if you look at Burton, so um, last week, <clears throat> excuse me, away, they drew 2-2 they drew with Rotherham. You know, that's a decent result. 0-0 against Northampton away. At home, Stevenage, 0-0. Uh, and Mansfield away 3-3. Three, three. So on the opening day of the season, sorry, in the Carabao Cup, they lost 4-0 against Blackpool, but that's the cup that might have been youngsters. But, you know, 3-3, three, 2-2, three, two, two, so they can score just, goals. Just the Moon's still there, isn't he? Oh, is um, Harry Eisted in goal as well? He uh, probably will be, won't he? Yeah, he hmm. will be, yeah. 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 He'll be due a performance, won't he? Um, <laughs> but it's, 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 it's both sides, isn't it? You, you can lose, if you lose 7-2, you think, you know what, score two goals at, at Old Trafford, but, to go empty-handed away from Stevenage and not creating well, much. Yeah, and, and you look at some of the, you look at some of the fixtures like Stockport at home coming up, uh, Huddersfield away coming up. Yeah, this is on paper the easier game, and you, so you've got to get something out of this, and you really to bounce back. I think thing is, you look at what Clark said today about mo not Molly coddling players and what have you, and like you say, he's talking a good game, but now we need to see proof of that. We need to see him being ruthless. We need to see him kicking somebody up arse. Well, he's been ruthless means... with that, that new winger, isn't he? And, um, and Gent, the way he's talking about them. I mean, that new winger's not going to be playing anytime soon, the way he, he said he's not doing so anything. So he says, right? yes. But he needs yeah. to be doing this now with, exi with the existing players because the existing yeah. players, three or four of them, are not putting it in. We're back to what we had at the end of last season where people are just... Not turning well, up at games and thinking well, the like, names first on sheet and they don't have to do anything. And it's like not, he said, he said, well, he, he said it a few times, didn't he? Um, I'm here to win football matches, so um, he's laid his stall out. So, like I say, his team's got to mirror him, hasn't it? Now, yeah, yeah. And you know, let's let's not forget after the Burton, there's three games in a week. You got the Saturday night 7:45 kickoff at home versus Stockport. On paper, you think Stockport, but look where they are in the league. Then on the, uh, I think it's the Tuesday night, you're at home to Wickham. 
followed by a 12.30 kickoff the following Saturday against Huddersfield. And then the Tuesday after, you're back at Huddersfield again for the EFL Trophy. And then you're talking about the middle of October. So there's some tough fixtures coming up. I know kickoff time probably don't matter, but I find 8 o'clock, oh well, 7.45 p.m. on a Saturday a bit awkward. But hey, it, it is what it is. But if you don't start to find some form against a team that hasn't won, it's going to be twice yeah. as hard, probably. Yeah. Stuck for the firing on all cylinders. Um, Wickham, Wickham. But Huddersfield, you know, it, it, let's face it, Duff will have uh, something to, not prove maybe, but, you know, he'll want to do well, won't he? Um, yeah. So it, it, it's, going to be, it's going to be interesting. So the, the only question remains then, after 30 minutes of analysing why we're so shit, I'm um, putting 50 pence at oh, me to so I can get some more no, light in my bed. It's going to stay going darker. No, it's getting dark. I, I actually, nice I actually, to join in. Nice actually, to join in. Oh, I that's strange. It's a bit weird then. Turn your light on, you tired bugger. No, I'm not putting lights on, you can bollocks. Light the candle then. So, Burton away. Saturday, 21st of September, 3 o'clock kickoff. I use light on my phone. Is that better look? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. That side. That's oh, that's turn it off. Turn it off. Oh, that's Ian, result and first Barnsley goal scorer for Burton versus Barnsley. 2 1 Barnsley. First goal scorer. Cosgrove. Okay. Steve? You won't, you won't play now. One apiece, Connell. I think it'd be a draw. And Connell's. Connell's due a game. In it, we do a performance, actually, off Connell. Um, so I think we won a piece on Connell for me. I was going to say 3-1, Devante Cole, but I'm not. Uh, I, I, I... Has he kicked the ball yet for West Brom? Or is he I just know, popping I bar what, up? I, I genuinely think we're going to leave empty-handed against Burton. I think, yeah. yeah. I think they score goals. Um, against them, you know, away at Rotherham, they scored Man Mansfield. I, I genuinely think we can we can lose this one. And my biggest fear is without scoring a goal, and and will be in the last three matches I've conceded eleven, maybe twelve. So I I genuinely, I've just got this feeling, and I hope I'm wrong. I genuinely hope I'm wrong, but I think we might lose this one because he wants a reaction, and that's great on paper to say that we want a reaction. How do the players feel after letting themselves down? Probably letting some of the fans down as well. You know, family is there. It's a big occasion. And they just, it's like the froze, isn't it? The occasion got to them a bit. And tactically, maybe not, you know, as astute as we as we could have been. But yeah, it is what it is. So, um, so we've got a win, a draw and a loss. So it's going to be interesting next week. How we many away again. fans are going? Do we know? How many tickets we sold? It's not, very, because it's not very big end, is it? I did. I did. I did 1,200, I think. 1,200. So, so are, they not, are they not going to bother then now? Did they not need to bother going now, Carlo? Shall we tell them to go and go shopping with our no, lads? And, and enjoy, enjoy your day out. I mean, Burton, it's where the breweries are, aren't they? And, and, oh, yeah. and, and historically, it's it's a decent day out, is Burton. I've been a couple of times myself, but I, I don't know. I just, this is, for me, the first turning point in the career, in Clark's career for Barnsley. He, he either sets them up and they get a fantastic win and we're back at it and, and he gets the best out of them, or it's a bit of a downfall and we start worrying, saying, what the heck has happened to our team? So I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. There's, I, a lot, I there's, a lot on, uh, there's a lot on Keila Dunn's shoulders on Saturday, isn't there? Because he's had a week's rest and we're all going to pin our yeah. ropes on him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know. if Has his wife had the baby yet? Because his wife is nine months pregnant and I saw on social media. She was sort of hoping, uh, but last thing I saw. So will he be there? I mean, if they have a baby born and they give him a day off or whatever, I mean, maybe they give him... Day off? Day off? Yeah. I don't know. She wants to be back ironing and getting tea ready. She'll be right. <laughs> Ooh, wait for comments coming in for that one. They'll not be long now, will they? Oh, my name will be mud. If, if, if you do here. comment, can you tag what, the what's, presenter? What's that I'm yeah. hearing? We've just lost the McDonald's sponsorship. We've just lost TalkSport. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Is that talk sport? It, it was Steve. It weren't me, honestly. <laughs> uh, lads, let's hope I'm wrong. If you are going to Burton, as always, and, and Barnsley, I've got a brilliant away following. So, you know, enjoy your day out. Get behind the lads, even if there was nothing to get behind. But let's see how they do. And we'll be back next week. And by then, hopefully, we can analyse a fantastic win against Burton. And back to winning ways. Uh, but for now, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week. You Reds. Move.